Now, it took her a couple of days to get the courage because this parliament has been so savage, but bookseller Suzanne Horman has agreed to give her first interview and here tonight, her first since she became a hate target of trolls and some of the book industry activist types for a couple of tweets she wrote last month, mind you. Now, Horman is the owner of Robinson's Bookshop, actually a chain of bookshops. Last month, she complained, what's missing from our bookshelves in store? Positive male lead characters of any age, any traditional nuclear white family stories, kids' picture books with just white kids on the cover, and no wheelchair and that rainbow or Indigenous art, plus non-Indigenous Australian history. We need better stories. She then posted books we don't need, hate against white Australians, socialist agenda, equity over equality, diversity and inclusion, read as anti-white exclusion, left-wing government propaganda, basically the woke agenda that divides people, not stocking any of those in 2024. And she said, I am advocating for a substantial shift in the focus of Australian publishers to be in line with public opinion and requests for books and for what is good. We aren't going to stop books that intend to cause harm and make Australians hate each other. Susan Horman joins me now. Susan Horman, thank you so much for joining me. Why did you write those tweets? Thanks for having me on to explain myself. Um, before I answer that question, though, I think I'd like to um, just say to all of the really hardworking and passionate people in the book industry, and we are a very small you know, tight-knit community that I'm, you know, incredibly sorry to have um, created um, all of this um, fuss and to have um, worded something that is actually a very important issue so poorly um, so that people couldn't actually hear the message of what I was trying to say um, because it is actually very important that we have um, books for everyone and it's always been the philosophy of Robinson's. Yeah, but that was never in question. I mean, I saw one of the people criticising you was someone with a disability who actually admitted that you'd helped her a lot and put her books on sale. So I don't think that's really the issue. People saying that, it's false. But from what your answer, it sounds to me that you've come under a lot of pressure. Oh, absolutely. There's been a, a, a lot of um, pressure from some very loud people um, who probably have um, some reasons for escalating the issues that they believe in. Um, from my point of view, I want to talk about um, the gap that we have in the market and that's always been my purpose in this conversation. So I um, have been at Robinson's for 17 years and through that time I've been sort of the main person doing a lot of the book buying whilst I do have a few wonderful people helping me. So. We see about four and a half thousand new books every month and um, so over the 17 years I've actually seen nearly a million books and reviewed them whether to put them on the shelf or not. Um, so I, I, I feel like I have a fairly good insight into the market and probably a lot of experience looking across a wide range of the whole market and all the publishers lists that um, most people in, in the industry just don't have. Look, who, who, would, who could better tell what's for sale and what's not than someone who's looked at one million titles in her career? And it seems to me you have identified what you say is a gap in the market. You've got a lot of customers asking for specific kinds of books and they're not there. Now, what kinds are you talking about? So whilst we do have a lot of the sort of diversity-themed um, books. We, we see like 30 to 40 Indigenous books coming out every every 30 days. Um, and we see about 40 to 50 in the LGBTQ plus space. Um, we do see a lot of um, books for kids that are on um, inclusion and diversity. And I just see lo lots of lists of these and pretty much nothing coming out for men and boys that have a positive role model um, or men portrayed in a positive way. Like we're going on a quest and we're going to conquer it. And, yeah, uh, we're think about Harry Potter. Lord of the Rings before that. Um, Biggles, he was a bit racist, I admit <laughs> that, but Biggles before that. But seriously, yes, I mean, all the way back to the uh, Odyssey and the Iliad, but uh, and something that seems to have dried up and there's this... This is not good. 
No, and I mean, for men who don't want to read crime or fantasy, there isn't a lot of to go to. So in crime, um, we do have um, a lot of great male detective books, um, but female detectives are now starting to become the mainstream. And in the traditional um, fantasy space, there's a whole new emerging trend of romanticy for women, um, where you know the woman kind of conquers the world, um, but she, she falls in with. Uh, sorry. No, well, that's fine. I don't <laughs> mind that. I mean, you know, before that, I wouldn't couldn't go past the book uh, bookshop, particularly at the airports, you know, where there wasn't. A, I married an Arab, Bed you know, a Bedouin. I married a Bedouin, or I'm uh, from the, uh, you know, I married into a tribe and women with veils. There was a whole flirtation with that for a while. But you, you're right. I mean, but you also said. Um, that you would be cutting out books that preach division and a contempt for Australia. Now, I'm getting sick of that too, by the way. Uh, that's going to cut out a lot of your stock. Well, there has been a growing trend of books that, you know, um, are quite um, aggressive towards white Australians and are trying to promote First Nations issues. And I do appreciate that, you know, we do have some First Nations people who have experienced, you know, quite a lot of trauma and um, you know I do sympathize with that and I'm you know sorry that all of that's happened but the reality is I don't want to get caught in the middle of you know hate filled um, books that that make people you know dislike each other or hate each other and um, you know the, the the volume of them this year will be picking up I so there will be quite a few coming out I've seen some of the forward lists and you know I just don't see um, a, a place for them in, in my store. As the, you know, daughter of, um, you know, refugees to Australia, um, my parents, you know, arrived in Australia in a time of need and Australia looked out for them. And so I have a very close bond to Australia and I, I don't like bashing Australia. I feel very proud of my country. It's so interesting you say that because my parents came out here in 1958 and this is around the time that Australia made a hero of a guy called Nina Colotta for their weird mob. So, you know, a story allegedly of an Italian who was trying his best to, you know, integrate into this wonderful country and his, you know, combat with the English language and all that. It was wonderful. People love that kind of stuff. They want the affirmative stuff if it's offered. But Suzanne... From what I've heard, from the way you look now, you look nervous. From what we were talking about before, you look like you've gone through the mill. The hate that's been waged at you, I mean, how hard has that been? Well, you know, standing up for something really does take a toll. Um, there have been some people who have been um, quite aggressive online. Um, there's a lot of um, misinformation, a lot of um, doctored images and a lot of um, rumour and gossip and, um, you know, I guess I just have to look away and um, luckily I have lots of really positive voices around me. I have had a barrage of phone calls from our customers um, that have almost brought me to tears last night because I listened to um, lots and lots of phone calls back to back off our answering machine and people just saying thank you, thanks for standing up, um, you know, thanks for being brave, we don't have a voice. So um, that, that really helps when you know that there are people who can hear what you're saying and they agree with you. It seems to me, look, through this you've been on the brink of tears really, but it must also be hard for your staff. Oh look, the staff have um, been very brave and um, they have had some nasty phone calls and so we have turned our phone system to auto attendant so people can leave a message. Um, but, you know, the safety of the staff and their mental health and wellbeing is paramount. And so um, I'm hoping at the end of all of this, we can all sit down together and discuss what happened and how everyone feels about it. So I'm really looking forward to catching up with everyone when all of this settles down and, and people feel like they can take a breath. It's always struck me that people uh, claiming to stand for inclusion and tolerance are the most nasty people you can come across. I, I wonder that the hypocrisy doesn't uh, you know, stare them in the uh, mirror when they look at it. Now, listen, there'll be a lot of people um, watching that'll want to, I think, 
support you? How do they do that? Uh, can they order books online from you, for instance? Yeah, so we have a website, um, robinsonsbooks.com.au. Um, we have seven bookstores across Melbourne and the locations are on our website. Um, so on our website, you know, we, we do um, sell, send books to all over Australia. So we, yeah, we look out to getting some orders. Well, if you want to make sure that someone isn't cancelled simply for making quite obvious points based on their experience, they're not a nasty person, as you can tell, then uh, why don't you decide to order through her bookshop rather than go to a multinational like Amazon or something like that? You know, support debate and support freedom and support a nice person. There you go. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you.